Hi folks, HR Funk here with a new midweek update. And if you saw the midweek update that I released last week, you know in that one I covered reloading a semi-automatic pistol, specifically tactical reloading of a semi-automatic pistol or what some people call emergency reloading. This week, in the interest of being thorough, I thought I would do the same sort of video, only this time focus on the double action revolver, which is what I have with me here today. And in this video, I'm going to cover two different reloading techniques for the double action revolver. And at the outset, I want to say this is intended for double action revolvers with swing out cylinders like my Model 66 here. I'm not going to be covering anything for single action revolvers or brake top revolvers or anything like that. It's going to be specifically modern style swing out type double action revolvers. Also, in this video, I'm going to be focusing on reloading from a speed loader, which I have with me here. Now, I know some of you prefer speed strips because they lay flat in your pocket, and if you like those and they work for you, more power to you. I hope they continue to work well for you. I don't particularly care for them. I like the speed loaders much more, so this is what I'm going to cover. And as a revolver instructor, which I am certified here in Ohio to instruct police officers in the use of double action revolvers, this is what I train police officers to use. I don't worry about speed strips or anything like that. And reloading a double action revolver, just as I said with the semi-automatic pistol video last week, is something that as a concealed handgun licensee, if you're out there going about your daily business, and you find yourself in the unfortunate and unlikely circumstance of having to use your firearm to defend yourself, chances of having to use that firearm and fire all the way through its entire ammunition capacity and then reload and still be justified legally in continuing to fire at an imminent threat is a very, very unlikely and rare situation. In fact, you're far more likely to be in a situation where just displaying a firearm is going to be enough to convince the bad guys that they have somewhere else that they would much rather be. And if you actually fire a shot, they're probably going to make that determination even faster and leave the area that much quicker. If you're in that circumstance and you have fired a number of shots, just because you fired those shots, even if you fired until your semi-automatic pistol or revolver is empty, and you reload, that doesn't mean because you were once legally justified in using your firearm that you are still legally justified in using your firearm. If your former attacker is now fleeing for the hills as fast as he or she or they can go, you can't continue legally firing at them just because at one time in the past they presented an imminent threat. So I want to get all that out of the way just to lay the groundwork for what we're going to be talking about with revolver reloading. If you are an armed professional, and the police officers that I use these days when I instruct them with double action revolvers are typically carrying them in a backup or off-duty capacity. And for those individuals or for other armed professionals who might choose to carry a double action revolver, you do need to practice your reloading skills. In fact, it is crucial since you only have six rounds or in some cases five rounds to begin with that you be confident in reloading because you might find yourself in a circumstance where that absolutely does become critical. So with all that groundwork out of the way, let's take a look at the techniques I'm going to show you for reloading a double action revolver. There are two techniques that I'm going to review in this video for reloading a double action revolver. Each has its own strengths and its own drawbacks, and I'll cover those as I review the technique. And it's important to decide which one of these you're going to use and then practice that technique until it becomes second nature. The reason being the technique you use is going to determine where you carry your reload. If you're going to use the strong hand technique that I'm going to demonstrate first, you're going to want your reload either in a speed loader pouch on your non-dominant side, in my case, my left hand side, or if you're reloading from a pocket, you need to have that speed loader in a pocket on your non-dominant hand side. For the second technique that I'll show you, which is going to be a what I'll call a non-dominant hand reload because that's the hand the revolver is going to be in, if you're going to use that one, then your speed loaders, either your speed loader pouch, needs to be on the same side as your dominant hand, or it needs to be in a pocket on the same side as your dominant hand. Again, I'll cover each of these as I review the techniques. Okay, the first technique, as I said, I'm going to refer to as the dominant hand reloading technique. The reason for that is because in this technique, your revolver never leaves your shooting hand or your dominant hand. 
you maintain your shooting grip all the way through the reload and then you're able to continue firing. When you use this reloading technique, after you've fired your final shot and you determine that it's time to reload, you're going to reach underneath the revolver with your non-shooting hand at the same time you actuate the cylinder release with your shooting hand. Now with a Smith & Wesson revolver this is very simple because I'm pushing forward on the cylinder release with the thumb of my shooting hand. I'll come up closer so you can see what I'm doing. So I fired my last shot. Now this hand is coming over at the same time the thumb from my shooting hand is going to push forward on the cylinder release and I'm going to swing the cylinder out just like this. Once I've done that, I'm going to point the barrel of the revolver or the muzzle of the revolver toward the sky and sharply wrap the extractor rod of the revolver in order to extract or eject the fired casings. One of the strengths of this, actually there are two strengths of this particular reloading technique. The first, as I said before, is the revolver never leaves your dominant shooting hand. And the second is with that sharp strike on the extractor rod, if there is a casing that's stuck in one of the chambers, that should help to drive that casing out of the revolver. Once you've completed that, and I'll come back around where you can see again, you're now going to point the muzzle of the revolver toward the ground. And it's important that you make sure you're pointing the revolver up and pointing the revolver down. When you're pointing it up to eject the fired cartridges, gravity is helping to remove those casings from the chambers and get them down out of the way. Now we're going to want gravity to help us as we're inserting our new speed loader with our non-dominant hand and rotating it, closing the cylinder, and then coming back to shoot. So you'll notice too, as I reloaded, I did not take the time once the cartridges left the speed loader to remove the speed loader, drop it, or anything else. I just simply released the cartridges and then closed the cylinder, and as you saw, the speed loader falls away all by itself. That's one of the things you can do to speed up your reload rather than taking precious seconds to figure out something to do with that speed loader. Once it's dropped the cartridges into your chambers, it's no longer of any value. Just simply close the cylinder and let it fall. As I said, then you can come back up on target and you're ready to shoot. So now let's see how that technique looks when I perform it a little bit faster. So I fired out my last shot, ejected the spent casings, the speed loader is out, cartridges are in, I just let the speed loader drop and the revolver is back up on target. I'm not timing that, but that probably took about two, maybe two and a half seconds. But in just a minute, I'm going to try it for real with my shot timer. And what I'm going to do is fire one shot, simulating that was the last shot that I fired in the cylinder. Then I'm going to perform the dominant hand reload and then fire one more shot. And we'll see how long it takes from the first shot to the last shot to perform this reload. That was 6.18 seconds, 6.18 seconds from the first shot to the second shot. Now, as I said, there are a couple of drawbacks to the dominant hand reloading technique. The first is, as I strike the extractor rod in order to eject the fired casings, it is possible to bend that extractor rod if I don't strike it and push straight down. If I hit from an angle and I hit it hard enough, I could bend that extractor rod and that might disable the revolver. Even if I complete my reload and close everything back up, depending on how badly it's bent, the revolver may not fire. The other thing that I don't care for with this technique is my reload is done with my non-dominant hand. It just always feels a little more unnatural to me to be operating the speed loader with my non-dominant hand than to operate it with my dominant hand which is why I prefer the technique that I'm going to show you now. Now, if you're looking closely, you'll notice that I've moved my speed loader pouch from the non-dominant side of my body to the dominant side of my body, because as I said, I'm going to be reloading this time with my dominant hand. So I want to access 
the speed loader from this side of my body, either from the speed loader pouch or from a pocket. For the non-dominant hand reload, as the name implies, I'm going to be switching the revolver from my shooting hand to my non-shooting hand. And I'll come up here closer so you can see this. After I've fired my final shot, I'm going to be reaching under the revolver just like I did in the last technique and releasing the cylinder the same way. But this time, as I do that, I'm reaching all the way through with these two fingers and I'm going to turn the revolver once again with the muzzle pointed toward the sky. And now I'm actuating the extractor rod with my non-shooting hand thumb. Once I've completed that, once again, the muzzle is pointed toward the ground. I'm accessing my speed loader this time with my dominant hand and positioning the cartridges in the chambers, closing the cylinder, and I'm ready to fire that next shot. In terms of strong points, as I said a little while ago, I like reloading better with my dominant hand. So I'm constantly keeping that speed loader under control in my dominant hand. And when I close the cylinder, once I've dropped those, those cartridges into the chambers and I close the cylinder, I'm again getting my shooting grip on the revolver as it's coming back up on target. And when it comes up on target, it's ready to go again. Another drawback to this particular technique is that it lacks the strong ejection or the strong actuation of the extractor rod that the dominant hand technique does have. That said, I've never run into a situation with factory ammunition where I could not eject the spent cartridge cases with the thumb of my non-dominant hand. So if you're using hand loads and they get stuck in there sometimes and they get really stuck in there, and you want to keep using them, then I would suggest you use the dominant hand technique to be able to at least try to drive those out of there. Although keep in mind what I said, it is possible to bend that extractor rod. If you're using factory ammunition and you don't have problems with that ammunition sticking in your chambers, then you might want to consider this one. Now, one thing too to be aware of, if you have just fired six rounds of ammunition through here and you turn the revolver like this, that forcing cone on the barrel there may well be hot. So you could potentially burn yourself doing this. I've never done it. I've never burned myself. I've felt heat coming from there, but never to the point where it raised a blister or anything else. Just I thought, oh, that's kind of warm, finished my reload, and then went back to shooting. So it's another thing to be aware of with this technique. Now let's see how it looks a little bit faster. So here we go with our non-dominant hand reload. I fired my last shot, ejected the spent casings, accessed the speed loader, reloaded, and I'm back up on target. And again, you notice I just let the speed loader fall away once I closed the cylinder, or I should say as I was closing the cylinder. Now, let's see how that looks for real with the shot timer. And that was just over five and a half seconds, 5.58 seconds. And there you have it, folks, two reloading techniques for your double action revolver. And that's going to do it for this midweek update. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is. And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.